The Volvo Environment Prize is awarded by an independent foundation, which was instituted in 1988. The selection committee is comprised of internationally recognized scientists and researchers in the fields of economics and environmental studies. Laureates represent all fields of environmental and sustainability studies and initiatives. The Volvo Environment Prize 2007 is awarded to Amory B. Levins for his outstanding achievements in the field of energy efficiency. Energy efficiency means you do the same job or better with less energy and more brains and less money. We're here in Colorado to try to find out more about this year's laureate, Amory Lovins. We'll meet him soon, but first we decided to try to find an answer to a classic question. Can a prophet ever be honored in his hometown? We went to nearby Aspen to ask the people there if they know who this man is. Do you know who this guy is? No. I know that he's in a, a pretty amazing guy. I wish I knew him. <laughs> Have you seen him? Emery Lovins, a legend. He looks like a person in the, uh, the Sesame Street videos. He's a genius. He's, he's the kind of people we need in the world. Thank you. Well, for those who do know him in his native Colorado, Emery Lovins is certainly well respected and regarded as a visionary whose time has come. Imagine a world where we don't just know more, we also know better. Energy moves our world. But our enormous dependency on coal and oil carries a major threat, climatic change. Instead of mining more coal, drilling for more oil, and exploiting the still untapped resources of the Arctic and other parts of the world, Chief Scientist Amory Lovins of the Rocky Mountain Institute has other ideas. It's cheaper to save fuel than to buy fuel. Efficiency is cheaper than fuel. So once people realize that this is really about profits and jobs and competitive advantage, any political resistance will melt faster than the glaciers. For more than 30 years, Amory Lovins has advocated a more efficient use of energy rather than increasing production of it. In numerous books, articles and speeches, he has demonstrated that sufficient energy exists for everyone in the world to live and move about comfortably provided that we do away with the wasteful energy practices of today. I'll be talking only about ways to provide the same services as now or even more of them, using less energy just by using the energy more efficiently. In the 1970s, Lovins published his first works regarding what he called soft energy paths, but the world was not ready to listen. You give no source material on the statistics that you presented us to with. Uh, are they God, U.S. government, <laughs> my handbook of uh, uh, fraudulent statistical <laughs> manual, or just what is the source material? Oh. This is from In the early 1980s, he and his former wife Hunter Lovins, together with a group of fellow energy specialists, moved to Snowmass, Colorado, and founded RMI, the Rocky Mountain Institute. The Institute's first building was created as a showcase of energy efficiency, using hardly any electricity from the grid. It was almost self-sufficient thanks to solar energy and smart new technology that provided comfortable temperatures, even in the cold winters of the Rocky Mountains. We chose to settle in western Colorado because we wanted a beautiful, mountainous, safe, clean, rural environment, but with all the infrastructure that we needed to work effectively and a place that many people we want to influence already live in or come to or want an excuse to come to so that we can travel less and it will also be easier to attract and retain the most talented people who also want to live in such a place. Uh, and this has worked out very well. We started off uh, thinking the Institute would be just a handful of people, so we built uh, a house, jungle, and research center that could have about a dozen people. Well, now we have about 80, uh, some in another building, some in Boulder. Uh, but the building also exemplifies what we do. The building uses 1% the normal amount of space heating and water heating energy, a tenth the normal electricity, when we get that and more from solar, and uh, half the normal amount of water. All of these savings paid for themselves in 10 months with 1983 technology, but now we could do a lot better. Most of the energy used in the world is consumed by two sectors, transportation and buildings. 
That's why most of the work at RMI is concentrated on these two areas. The efficiency of converting coal at the power station into incandescent light in the room is about 3% and only 0.3% of the fuel energy we put in our cars actually moves the driver. He was 30 years ahead of the rest of the country. Amory was absolutely right on the future direction of cars. His vision in 1991, I think, will be the dominant architecture in 2021. And I think in the next five years, we're gonna to start to see real hypercars on the road. Lightweight vehicles, uh, aluminum, ultimately carbon fiber, hybrid electric drive systems, conventional ones, more aggressive ones like plug-ins. And by changing the tires and changing the aerodynamics, we're able to create the hyper truck, if you will, a new generation of trucks uh, that we actually have already worked with Walmart on to create their roadmap to get to this next generation of trucks. And now we're broadening that to the entire industry. And now we're working with dozens of manufacturers across the truck uh, supply chain to create a new generation of double and triple efficiency trucks. Ultimately, I think we could very well go to a mixture of electricity and hydrogen for all kinds of vehicles, including airplanes, and get even another big efficiency jump. If you go from tripled efficiency airplanes to the, the hydrogen cryoplane version, you could get almost another factor two efficiency, and uh, with good economics and improved safety. I agree with one of the leading investors, Bob Shaw, in this field, who says people who think the hydrogen economy is impossible should stop interrupting those who are doing it. The Rocky Mountain Institute is known for its leading-edge research projects on energy efficiency, but it also functions as a consultancy for some of the biggest companies in the world who are trying to create energy efficiency in their business operations. In Boulder, Colorado, RMI has its Center for Research and Work on Energy Efficiency in Buildings. We help architects, engineers, building owners, developers uh, make their projects more energy efficient, better able to use daylight, more water efficient, select appropriate materials, all moving towards footprint positive developments. So buildings that produce more energy than they use, buildings that purify and cleanse the water before it goes back into the system or runs off site. Industry-wide, by far the biggest change and the biggest impact we can have is through existing buildings. So we're working along with Bill Clinton and the Clinton Climate Initiative to help start looking at the retrofit options that exist in 40 of the largest cities in the U.S. that they've targeted. So we're helping lay out the framework, really, for incorporating efficiency measures in existing buildings and making it cost effective. My practical day-to-day -day work tells me that what I'm telling you is correct, that many wonderful things are happening, chiefly through business leadership, chiefly for profit. And they seem to be accelerating very rapidly as more and more businesses figure out that they can make more money from efficiency than from waste. Amory Lovins is an optimistic environmentalist with a strong belief in energy efficiency. Thanks, Amory. The quality of life improves. You'll be more comfortable in an efficient house. You'll see better and it looks better with efficient lights. Your food is fresher in an efficient refrigerator. You produce more and better products in efficient factories. Uh, there is no sacrifice involved. Quite the contrary. Everything gets better. But what about the major problem of greenhouse gases and the global climate change? There might be major changes already underway that cannot be stopped. To the extent that is not true, the problem can readily be solved. If the world saved energy only two or three times as fast as attentive companies do very profitably, the problem would be solved. Yes, I think it's possible too. Okay. I think he'll do it. This revolution has already happened, sorry if you missed it.